Today, you can find glory in making your own holster bag. I got so much drinking me, wonder if you missing me. These days I can't fucking sleep, just bear on my here living dreams. If I send this text to my shawty, is you down to star? Don't say not tonight, cause you be busy, tell another lie. I done seen this thousands of times. I read type like thousands of lines. We done did this thousands of times. Real quick, before we get into the tutorial, there was a giveaway contest in my last video where I designed some t-shirts based off the DIY themed videos that I made. So congrats to the winners. I'll have their usernames posted in the description below and I'll reach out, DM, figure out how I'm gonna send it to y'all. Follow my TikTok or IGs to stay tuned for other giveaways and contests. And let's get back to the holster bag. Today's tutorial is paired with a DIY kit, which you could buy online. There's gonna be a link in the description, which has the pattern if you want just the pattern. The second link is gonna direct you to the DIY kit, which is all the materials, the thread, the notions, the fabric, zippers that you need for this project, plus the pattern paper. So you don't have to worry about anything. You go on that link, click it, press play on this video, and follow along with me as I sew with you step by step from the beginning to the end. Kits are for those who are new to sewing and wanna try it out, maybe a little intimidated going to the fabric store like I was, or don't have the time to collect all these little things and feel comfortable just getting the kit. Now you might be thinking, this is a long tutorial video, but it's because I go through every single step and I try to explain each step thoroughly. That way you as a viewer can learn to sew as we go along and use these same skills for other projects that you wanna do. And if you do end up making a holster bag off this tutorial, share some pictures on IG. I'd love to see the work. It's at glory.allen with an A. And I think we covered all our bases, so Let's get the show started. This PDF pattern is 36 inches wide, so you could download this pattern, but to print it, it's not meant to be printed at home. Send it to a print shop that has a large format printer, and they'll be able to print this on 36 inches wide of paper so that you can follow along and use this pattern. Before we get started on sewing, I wanna point out a few elements on this pattern piece. There's two panels, the pocket panel and the holster bag panel. On the top left corner, you have the name of the project. You have the YouTube title, which you can search up to find this video in the future. It's got the Glory Allen DIY code. And it also has a section on the right, which shows you the fabric required for this whole project. And there's a notes section that I added. So as you're going along through this project, if there's some notes that you want to take note of, like steps to look out for or improve on next time, Write them down here, and when we cut out this pattern piece, let's just cut out the top left corner. That way it'll contain all the information you need if you wanna do this project a second time, and notes for how you can improve. And lastly, in the pattern piece, there's these little interruptions along the line here, and they're there on purpose. So before we would notch the fabric, which means cutting a little marker into the fabric, and that's typically there to properly align two panels together. However, someone had commented on a previous video that they notched too deep and then they could see it when they finished the project. So instead of cutting into the fabric, you cut the notches outwards when you're initially cutting the fabric and then you line these tabs up with the tabs of the same panel so that you can align it properly. And that'll avoid you accidentally cutting past the stitch line. A small change, but something to look out for when you're cutting the pattern. Let's start off the way we always do. Grab your kitchen scissors, your craft scissors, grab any scissors but your fabric scissors. And let's cut out the pattern. For this project, we're gonna use the same poly cotton twill that we used on the bucket hats. I like using the twill because I like the diagonal lines. I would say it's a pretty mid-weight material, so it keeps its form without being too stiff and heavy, and it's not too light that it's flimsy. It's a good medium for me and I prefer it so. That's what I have for the DIY kits. So the next step, once you've cut both the panels out, is to take your fabric and we're gonna lay it out and then put the panels on top, clip them down and then cut them. We'll take our pattern piece. This is how the pattern piece would stand, meaning this is the top. For this project, we'll run this along the grain line so that we'll punch, we'll cut one out right here one out beside it, and then we have enough, more than enough fabric left for the pocket. So on all fabrics, they're usually about 58 to 60 inches tall, and you can tell the edges by the salvage on the edge. This means that this is the direction of the cross grain, 
So the perpendicular to that is the grain line. The grain line is usually preferred because it's a little bit stronger, it doesn't have as much sag and it sits or drapes on the body better. So there are times when you can cut it on the cross grain. Sometimes it's for budget, sometimes the project you're doing won't really matter. So get some pins and pin it in place. and then get your fabric scissors and cut out two pieces of the holster bag panel and one piece of the pocket panel. Before you cut out the second holster bag panel, if the pattern was on top like this for the first cut, you're gonna wanna flip it over like that for the second cut. The reason we do that is because when we connect the pieces together, we want right sides facing each other and wrong sides on the outside. That way at the end we flip it inside out and it's right sides on the outside of both the front facing part of the holster bag and the under underside. When cutting the pocket panel, there's a reminder on the bottom to place on the fold. That means fold the fabric in half and then place that edge on the fold. This is going to give you a symmetrical cut when you cut out the panel. And then grab your clips. I'll use these usually at the fold to hold down the pattern. And then I'll use a pin or two at the top to hold the top down so when you're cutting it up, it stays in place. Once you're done cutting out the three pieces, two holster bag panels, one pocket panel, you have a lot of extra fabric. Keep this, don't throw it away. This will come in handy for other DIY projects you have coming. So set that to the side and let's focus on the holster bag. Place both holster bag panels in front of you and right sides on the top. The way you can tell between the right side and the wrong side is the wrong side has a little bit of inconsistencies, maybe a little bit rougher to the touch and the right side, because it's a polycotton twill, all twill materials will have these diagonal woven lines. So that's how you can tell diagonal woven lines is the right side. This is the part where we decide which shoulder we're gonna wear it on. If I wanna wear it on my right shoulder, then I would grab this side. The piece that goes up higher is for the back. So it would fit on me like this and stretch over like that. And if, since this is the right side, this is the arm that I would do if I wanted it on the right shoulder. But since I want the panel on the left shoulder, I'm going to take this one with the right side on the top, flip it around, this edge up, and the taller piece goes over my shoulder like this. So this is how I know which panel to use based on the shoulder preference. And we'll just deal with the front facing panel. Let's grab our holster bag panel and put it over top of our front facing piece. And then see the pocket placement here? each corner, put a pin down or use your finger and mark with chalk on the other side where that corner is going to be. So I'm just holding my finger down at the point, getting the chalk and pointing a mark there. Now that we've marked the corners where this pocket's going to go, we can remove this pattern and we can grab our pocket panel. Now match up the corners with the chalk marks and pin it into place. Once it's pinned in place, grab the pattern again. Where there's dotted lines on the pattern, try to draw that with chalk. And I have these one inch markers to try to guide you when you're drawing it yourself. So get a ruler and chalk and draw those in. When you're done, it should look something like this. And it's time to pull out our beloved sewing machines. I'm using the Singer 4423. I've been using this for a few years now. It's a heavy duty machine, so I can do a lot with it. I've had it for a few years now and haven't really had any issues with it, knock on wood. So I'd probably recommend it. So once our machine's set up, the first thing we're gonna do is sew around this box that we've created. We'll call it the zipper box. 
you're just gonna sew one line along the chalk lines. I have my tension set to four and I have my stitch length set to two and a half. Anytime you adjust the tension or the stitch length, I would take a scrap piece of fabric and test out the stitches before you work on your actual project. I'm also gonna swap out my regular sewing foot and I'm gonna put in my zipper foot because I just feel like I get a little bit more visibility with the zipper foot to be able to see the chalk line so I can get a more accurate stitch. Friendly little reminder, don't forget to reverse stitch at the beginning and the end of every stitch. And also, anytime you're sewing, you always want to have the feed dogs pull the fabric through. You never wanna pull the fabric yourself or push it because then you're just gonna mess up the stitch length and a whole lot of other things. So make sure to let the feed dogs, which are those teeth that come up from underneath and pull the fabric, pull the fabric. <laughs> just like before, when you come up to a corner, you wanna make sure the needle's down, pull the press foot up, twist the fabric, pivot, and then put the sewing foot back down and continue sewing. Okay, okay. The zipper box is sewed in. Grab your chalk again, and you're gonna draw a triangle on the right side of the box and the left side of the box. And then at the two tips of the triangle, connect it with one long line across. This is where you're gonna cut. So then I will grab my seam ripper just to start the opening. So grab your seam ripper, be very careful around your fingers. Use one hand to support the fabric and start a hole on both the top and the bottom fabric, the pocket panel and the holster bag. It's just gonna start a hole big enough so that you can pull your fabric scissors in and cut the rest. On any scissors, this area is gonna be where you have the most strength, not the very tip. So for these high precision cuts, you wanna cut closer to the base of the scissors, not the tip, because that's where you have the most control. Snip, snip. Once you have this cut, we wanna fold the top part of the pocket panel down, and we're gonna sew it down to the seam allowance. Now, if you have the time, this is a good time to press it with an iron and get a really nice flat seam. When we sew this down to the seam allowance, you're gonna to wanna to pull the bottom down so that it only attaches to the seam allowance. And then what you're also gonna to wanna to do is extend the lines on the outside of the box. That way you know the boundaries of where you could stitch. We're not actually gonna start and end at these chalk lines. These chalk lines are reminders of where not to stitch. So we'll probably start an inch in and end an inch early between these two markers. To reiterate, we're gonna sew the top of the pocket panel down to the seam allowance of the holster bag. And now that we've extended the lines of the box and drew it onto the pocket panel, we're gonna start our stitch an inch in from the left and we're gonna end an inch early from the right side, just like where I pointed. So pull your fabric under the sewing machine, fold that top panel down because we're gonna sew it onto the seam allowance. We're gonna line up our needle to be about an inch in from that boundary line. And I'm using my zipper foot. I'm lining the right side of my zipper foot to the connecting seam of this pocket panel. That way I get as close of a stitch as possible. As I'm sewing along, I'm coming up to that chalk line and I know I wanna stop short of that. So once I see that coming up, I'm gonna stop my sewing machine I'm gonna do my reverse stitch because I want to keep a little bit of distance from that boundary line and lock in the stitch and cut it off. Once you're done that stitch, this is what it should look like when you sew the top panel onto the seam allowance. And we're gonna do the exact same steps, but with the bottom side now. So we're gonna flip the bottom side over and we're gonna sew the bottom side of the pocket panel to the seam allowance of the holster bag panel. Like before, I'm gonna mark my chalk, the boundary lines from that box. And this time I'm gonna draw a marker of where I'm gonna start and end. And you can see that it's inside the boundary box and I'm gonna sew away. One of the more exciting parts of sewing, we turn it inside out, pull the pocket panels through the back so we can see the final arrangement. 
Now is a good time to press out these seams so you get a nice and clean fold. And it looks pretty decent, so we're gonna get that same zipper sewing foot. We're gonna go up to the edge, lining up the edge of my presser foot to the edge of the seams. And we're gonna lock in this by just sewing around the whole box to lock in this shape. Once you're done, your zipper box is gonna look something like this. So now everything's pulled back, it's sewed in so it's gonna stay, and it looks fairly clean and ready to have a zipper attached to it. So let's grab our zipper, open the zipper slightly, connect the teeth a little bit with your fingers, and sew that shut. This is just a helpful tip because the slider can get in the way when we're sewing the zipper to the panel. So it helps to pull it back, but to ensure that we're getting a straight stitch, we're gonna stitch this closed. When you're ready, use pins to hold the zipper in place and then put your project underneath the sewing foot. Don't forget to do a reverse stitch at the beginning and the end. And like before, I'm lining up the right side of my sewing zipper foot to the right edge of the area that I wanna sew, just so I can get as tight of a stitch as possible. And we go all the way around the zipper. Be very, very careful when you're coming up to the corners, especially the ends. You don't want that needle to come into contact or come down on any piece of metal like the zipper teeth or the zipper be very careful to avoid those areas and then there's gonna be a point when your zipper foot comes up to your zipper slider and there's no way that it can go through so this is how I get around it I stop with the needle down anytime you're pulling the foot up you want to make sure the needles down you can see there's no way it could slide through so I actually just take the foot off and I slide the zipper carefully past the needle be very very careful attach the foot back and then continue sewing and that's how i'm able to bypass the slider and get this stitch done in one stitch versus breaking apart into two stitches this is how the zipper should look once it's sewed in and now you'll want to deal with the back side of the zipper so we'll flip the panel over you'll see the pocket just folds up nicely just match up the corners and then we're going to sew all the way around on all five edges Use clips to hold the bottom piece up in place when you're about to sew. This would be a good time. If you have a serger handy, serge the edges, keep it nice and clean. I'm guessing a lot of beginners like myself when I first started didn't have a serger. So I just sewed this in. It's hidden inside the bag, so you won't really see it. If you have a serger, use it. If not, it's no big deal because no one's going to see the inside. When you get to the sides of the pocket panel, sweep the holster panel underneath. That way you're only sewing on the pocket panel. That's important because you don't want to sew the pocket to the holster. You just want to sew the pocket panel to itself. That way it closes in on itself. And when you put stuff in your pocket, nothing's falling out in different places. It's all nice and stitched up. Now it's time to focus on the straps. The straps that I use are these polypropylene straps. They're a little bit thicker. They're typical for backpacks. These nylon straps or webbings also used for backpacks, but they're a lot thinner. I find the thicker straps are better, especially for the D-rings when you're trying to hold them down. So these are the straps that I use. The length of your strap is gonna depend on your body size. And we know everyone comes in different shapes and sizes. You can always do a longer strap, like five inches sew it in and then we could do the d-rings at the very end and then actually measure it in and then just cut off the excess after cutting out the five inch strap i have my external notch placement here this is where the strap placement is going to go so we're going to put our strap on the holster bag panel side throw the whole project under the sewing machine and we're going to sew it in make sure to sew it in at less than three eighths of an inch seam allowance because that's the seam allowance that we're going to sew the two holster bag panels to so to prevent that I usually just move my needle to the right one, which is usually about an eighth of a difference. So that way if I know I line up for three eighths of a seam allowance, it's actually gonna sew a quarter or two eighths of a stitch. Moving the needle position is just a habit of mine. Maybe you'll just go for a quarter of an inch without moving the needle. It's totally up to you. As you sew more, you'll get into your own habits and routines. So in total, you'll have sewn in two straps onto the holster bag. 
One is gonna be a long 40 inches and the other is gonna be five inches and the five inch strap you're gonna sew into the strap placement closest to the zipper. Let's grab the holster bag panel that we left to the side and put it on top with the right side facing downwards. Once the panel's on top with the right side on the bottom, wrong side on top, we're gonna clip it all the way around and do a stitch 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around except for this corner. This side we're going to leave open so at the end we can pull the holster bag inside out so that the seams are hidden and finish it off with a top stitch. To help remember not to sew down this edge, I'm going to place one needle here and this is just a reminder for me as I'm sewing because there's going to be clips all around the bag not to sew through this area. Once you have clips holding both panels together, start your 3 8 of an inch seam allowance stitch all the way around. And if you did happen to move the needle position to the right when you were stitching the straps, make sure to remember to pull the needle position back to the middle. When you come up to the needle, that's when you know to stop. Make sure you do the reverse stitch to hold it in strong. Grab your scissors and every corner just cut off a triangle at every corner. What that does is when we turn it inside out so that right sides are on the outside, the corners sit more flush instead of being scrunched up because there's so much of a seam allowance in that corner that's now inverted. Another thing you could do is at every curve, cut notches or pizza slices that'll also help the fabric sit better on a curve. Now let's grab some chalk, grab your ruler, and on the front and the back, we're gonna draw a line 3 8 of an inch from the edge on the edge that we didn't sew closed. We're really close to the end, and this is the exciting part of sewing when you go, what did I do for the past three hours? So try to pull it all inside out. All right, not bad. So this is how it's gonna look. Over the shoulder, the strap comes up. We'll attach Velcro to this and this, patch it in, D-rings here, and that's it. So top stitch, then Velcro. Let's start with the top stitch. I'm gonna start the stitch at the front where the Velcro is because when I'm wearing the bag, that'll be the most hidden part. So I'd rather have the reverse stitch start there. Because I want that close, close stitch to the edge, I'm gonna swap the regular sewing foot for my zipper foot. And for a clean fold, use an iron to press out the seams. Eventually we're gonna come up to the edge where we didn't sew together. This was the opening that we needed to be able to pull this inside out. But since we have the line at 3 eighths of an inch, we know where to fold it inside itself to imitate that 3 eighths of a seam allowance and we'll do a top stitch to seal that closed. To attach the two inch Velcro, we're gonna clip it in and then flip the panel over to see the excess on the other side we're gonna use chalk to mark it and then cut it off. You can also smooth out the corners by using your scissors to round out the edges. And when you're done that, clip it down to the panel again. And then I'm using my zipper foot. So I can, again, get that close stitch right to the edge of the Velcro. And I'm gonna stitch a full circle all the way around. Don't forget to reverse stitch on the beginning and the end because this is definitely one piece that you wanna have held down. Especially because this Velcro is getting pulled and tugged out a lot. You want to make sure this thing's locked in.
Now the next step is gonna be to try this on so that we can measure the D-rings for the strap. I feel like it's good practice whenever you can to try on your garment that you're making as you're going through the construction process. That way you can figure out if things need adjusting before you start finalizing and top stitching. So once you have the vest on, grab the two D-rings and figure out the placement that you feel comfortable with. When you find that placement, use your clips to hold it in place. And then I would do a little test run, bring that other strap around and fit the strap through the D-rings. Give it a nice tug so that it's how you would want to wear it before we stitch it in. Some people will like to wear it loose, some people will like to wear it tighter. Just find out what's comfortable for you. And once you're happy with the placement, undo the strap, let's throw it underneath the sewing machine and let's do a stitch to hold this in. Again, make sure you have that reverse stitch at the beginning and the end because this is another piece of the garment that's going to be under a lot of tension. It's going to be used a lot, so we want to make sure that it's really locked in there. Once it's sewed in, take off the clips and then cut off any of the excess strap that you don't want hanging on there. Make sure you cut the excess, not the strap that's attached to the holster bag. Social these days I don't like talking You better keep walking Cause there ain't a lot we could say I promise my secrets is safe Ain't nobody taking my place You tell pretty lies And I see through your smile You got envy road all on your face Yeah Cause ever since me and my brothers got paid People keep calling trying to eat from my plate And bitches keep coming back trying to save face I gotta stay hip I don't got time to waste That's it from my tutorial today if you're looking for the DIY kit to recreate this at home, check out gloryallen.com. Or if you don't sew but you're interested in the brand, check out the Instagram at glory.allen for the latest handmaids and merch coming soon. And that's it. Peace. Well, the truth is I'm terrified. Well, hurt you always That's all I know. Oh, f forgot I'm recording. We're gonna sew this. We're gonna sew this all the way around with a three-eighths of an inch.